Hey guys, what's up? Ryan here from Terror Tech Entertainment, here to show you how to make a Minecraft server for the latest version of Minecraft on a Mac. So this will work for the latest version of Minecraft. Currently, the latest version is 1.2.5, but any versions after it, this tutorial will work. So, first off, what you want to do is go to minecraft.net slash download. There will be a link down in the description, and you want to download this file right here which is minecraftserver.jar. So click on that and just download that. And now what you want to do is create a folder wherever you want your server to be. So I'm just going to put it on the desktop and I'm going to call it something pretty simple which is minecraft server. Okay, so now that you have that done, you want to drag the minecraftserver.jar into your newest folder and that's all you have to do to get your server running so then you want to go ahead and go to terminal every Mac has this so just type it in in the spotlight search and search for it now what you want to do is type in CD space you're gonna have to do this every time you open up your Minecraft server and then you want to drag in the Minecraft server folder and hit enter. So then you're going to need to enter a line of code which I have down in the description. But first off what you want to do is probably copy that into a text edit document which this is the code right here. And as you can see I have all these numbers along the side and there are a few numbers right here. So these numbers determine how much memory your computer will run the server on. So each one of these increments is half of a gigabyte. So you want to use one of these numbers in place of this depending on how much memory your computer has. So how to check that, you can hit this little apple, hit about this Mac, and memory right here, it will show you how much you have. I have 12 gigabytes, so I usually use around 6 gigabytes of memory. Or you can just replace this number with one of these things and in the description I will have a conversion off to the side like such 0.5 gigabytes so that's how much this is so this would make this one gigabyte and so on all the way down and I went to six gigabytes but if you want to run more of that just add 512 as many times as you need which is 0.5 gigabytes so I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of these 1024s by the number I want running so at the moment I'm only gonna run at, at 3 gigabytes since I am also recording so I'm just going to change the number to 3072 which is 3 gigabytes and then I'm going to copy this code. So you're going to need this code to start up your server every time you want it to run. So I would save it somewhere. And then you want to paste it in and hit enter. And as you can see, it gives you all this info warning and stuff. All these warnings are just saying it has not found that specific file. So then it will create it. And if once you have all those files created, you will no longer see all these info and warning things. So what you will see under your Minecraft server folder now is that you have all these different files and one folder called world. This is your actual Minecraft world. And then all these other things do certain or do specific things that are pretty simple and I'll show you at the end of this video on what a lot of them do. So now that you have your server up and running, you can just jump in it. And don't get into your server until this says done, right down here at the bottom. And then you can just go into Minecraft, go log in. And as you can see, I'm running on 1.2.5, but this will work for the latest version of Minecraft, no matter what. Then you want to go into multiplayer, go add server, you can name it whatever you want, that doesn't matter. And then the server address depends on if you are running the server or not. If you are running it, you can just type in localhost and hit done. Click on it. This 
thing right here will show you that the server is up and running. If it has an X, that means you cannot connect to that server. But if you go localhost, you will always be able to connect to your server if it is open. Then you want to hit join server. And it is up and running. And here is your world. And there's a little jungle right over there. So that's basically all you need to do to open up a server. But there are a few more things that you need to do, and they are important, so pay attention. So first off, this isn't that important, but this just shows you what version of Minecraft is running on your server. So this first thing that says info, it says starting Minecraft server version 1.2.5. So that is the latest version of Minecraft right here, and that is also the latest server. So whatever you get off the site should be the latest version of the server. And if it is not, you're going to have to wait a couple hours, maybe a day at most, to let Mojang update their server. So then, as you can see, it shows you a lot of the information that goes on in your server. So it says, I logged in at these coordinates right here, and then I disconnected, and it tells you what time all this happens at. So, to shut down your server, what you can do, you can type in save-all just to save it real quick and then type in stop and it will do it will save it again and it will stop your server and you're gonna have to go through that whole beginning process again to get your server up and running unless you keep this terminal f thing open then you just have to import the code right here the Java code and hit enter and it will boot up really fast right here and then it just prepares the spawn and done and as you can see there are no more warnings so now what you want to do as it as you can see right here it says starting minecraft server on star and then 25565 so what you're going to want to do is open up this port so that other people can jump on your server and how you open the port is type in your router's IP address into the URL bar of any web browser and you can get there and to check this you click on your Wi-Fi thing up here and hit open network preferences and then under Wi-Fi if you click on advanced it will show you right here under the TCP the router address is right here and this is my IP address this is my local IP address so you, do, you don't want to give this to your friends because they won't be able to access your server. You will need to give them your global IP address. So type in this number right here into the URL bar. And then you're going to want to enter the password and the username, which is usually admin and password, unless you have changed that for your router. Then go down to port forwarding slash triggering and then you want to open up the port 25565 on your local IP address which was the top IP address that you saw I cannot show you that now because it's different for every router and it might give away some of my information and I don't want that to happen but it's pretty straightforward if you can't figure it out there's tutorials online just search your router and how to forward a port in Google or YouTube and you should be able to figure it out pretty simply then once you have your port open you're gonna want to find out your global IP address which is the IP address you give out to your friends which you can do by going to can you see me dot org so once you hit enter it will bring up a lot of information and your IP address right here this is your global one I have it blacked out at the moment because I don't want anyone knowing this but this is also a really good place to check that you forwarded your port correctly so under where it says what port you just type in 25565 or whatever port you opened it which this is the port that you're gonna want to open so once you type that in hit check and at the moment it is not loading very quickly because I do not have this port open for my IP address at the moment but if you have done it correctly where it says error it will say success and it should be pretty quick to figure that out and it will also show your global IP address under this blacked out bar 
right underneath my mouse and it shows you the port that it's searching for. So if it says success, you have done it correctly and you are good to go. Just give your friends your global IP address and that is what they type in. Just give me a second. Let me go ahead and minimize this. And that is what they type in under their multiplayer. So once Minecraft actually logs in for me. Okay, so it, Minecraft right now is temporarily down, or the site at the moment. So it will not let me log on. But if you go into multiplayer and hit add server, your friends where it says IP address or server IP, that's where you put in the global IP address. So then your friends can join your server. Make sure your server is up and running if your friends want to join and if you want to join. And then you can play with your friends and do not give your global IP address out to anyone that you do not trust because they will be able to access your computer and if they are smart enough and it can turn into a whole huge mess. So just give it out to your friends and people you trust and you should be good to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop the server and exit out and I'm going to head back into the Minecraft server folder here. As you can see there are banned IPs, banned players, there's your Minecraft server.jar which was the original folder, ops server.log which just shows you all that's happened on your server, server.properties and then the whitelist and then your world. So the banned IPs, you type in an IP address, their global IP address, that you do not want accessing your server, and it will not let them on, including banned players. You just type in their name right here, and just hit exit when you're done, or save it first. Then, under the ops are the people who have been opt, and they can use commands and stuff inside of the server. And how to op a person the first time you're going to want to be in the terminal and just type in op space and then the username and that should op that player and then they can use every single command that the server can use in the game. Which you can find all those commands by typing in slash help when you're in the chat menu or when you're in just the normal server you can just type in help. And then under server.properties you're going to want to open that up in text edit and it shows you a lot of information that you can use on your server like view distance, generate structure, spawn monsters, maximum players, the default game mode that people start out, difficulty, player versus player, online, spawn animals, just all this different stuff and you're going to want to keep them set either to false or true because there could be errors if you leave it blank or type in something else. So that is all. If you don't want to mess with this, you don't have to. Your server is already up and running. And there you go. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Check out our other stuff. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. And I will try to get back to you as quick as I can. And thanks for watching this video. And I will see you next time.